Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! combo tutorial video, and this time I'm going to be showing you some of what I believe to be the best Mermail combos that you can be performing once Dark Neo Storm becomes TCG legal. Now, I'm going to be showing you three combos in this video. One is a one-card combo of just Neptibus, and then the other ones are two-card combos of expanding upon Neptibus with different cards or with just different starters getting you into Neptibus. They are two-card combos, though. This one is the third combo, the last one I'm going to show you, and it ends on three negations, two Fog Blades, and a Climax, and a VFD, and you also have Moulin Glazed two cards out of your opponent's hand. Uh, these are two-card combos, like I said, and all of the combos at bare minimum end on taking two cards out of your opponent's hand with Moulin Glacia, and three negates at minimum. So you're dealing with five of your opponent's cards. Moulin Glaze discards two, and then you have two Fog Blades and Climax to deal with a theoretical other three. So I think that the Mermail uh, Orcus deck is something that could definitely see Rogue success uh, because it is giving the deck something to do going first. The engines for the Phantom Knight engine and the Orcus engine are compact enough that they shouldn't affect the deck too heavily when you're going second and having an extra card. And then also the Orcus engine itself is good at going second because it just allows you to pump your way out into things like Boral Sword, which supplement your Megalo abilities attack for game and stuff like that. But when you're going first, you set up boards like this of a, a big negation monster and then back row base negates, which is actually really hard to side against as well because most decks will side either sphere mode or back row removal, it's kind of hard to implement both of those into the same side decking strategy, especially once you're losing two cards off of Moulin Glacia. So like, this is really interesting, and I think that this deck, again, could see some rogue level success. But anyway, before I show you the combos, if you're new here, I'd like to welcome you on board to subscribe. If you want to see more Yu-Gi-Oh! videos and cool stuff like this, there's definitely some other things I'd like to show you, and if you enjoy, I'd love to welcome you on board, as I said. But other than that, if you watch the video decide you like it, make sure to give it a like and maybe leave a comment down below with some thoughts or feedback. I would love to hear from you, but definitely make sure if you watch the video and liked it that you give it the like. But other than that, if you want to catch my streams that happen three times a week or be in my Discord server, links to that are in the description down below. But with that out of the way, let me start showing you how these combos work. And I'm going to start off by showing you the one card Neptibus combo. Alright, so the first combo I'm going to show you is the most simple and basic one, and it is the only one card combo in this series of three combos, and that is just Neptibus. Now, this is going to make a Moulin Glacia plus three negates happen, which is pretty significant in its own right. So, this one is very simple, so I'm just going to truck right on through it. So, you're going to go Neptibus, Normal Summon, Send Dragoons, Add Dragoons. The Dragoons will trigger, and you're going to add this card called Lapis Dragon that we got in Savage Strike from your deck to your hand. Now, Lapis Dragon, when it's added to your hand, can special summon itself. So, it will special summon itself, and now you have two monsters to go into a Nightmare play. So, you're going to go into the Nightmare Phoenix in this case, and then go into the Nightmare Mermaid. And then this Mermaid is going to discard Dragoons to summon the uh, Orcus Nightmare from deck. I almost called it Idly, because I'm just so muscle memoried and <laughs> used to calling it that card. And then this Dragoons is going to search for Moulin Glacia. Now, at this point we have gotten exactly five cards into our graveyard, and four of them are waters. This is a water. Weird. Big, hmm. So, what you're going to do is you're going to link these two away into uh, Orchestrate Galatea, and then uh, we're going to special summon this Moulin Glacia because we have the five waters engraved. So Moulin Glace does that, and then we have the ability to go even further. So we get the Orcus Nightmare, to make this thing gain attack, and we're going to send the Harp Horror from deck to grave, and then the Harp Horror is going to activate its effect to summon from deck, and that is going to make us summon the Symbol Skeleton. So we'll summon the Symbol Skeleton, and then from here it's just an Orcus combo. Uh, it's just a little bit added value because you have the Moulin Glaze. So you're going to go into this, you're going to activate this, sending the Cloak to set a Fog Blade, and then you're going to banish the Skeleton, to summon back the Galatea, and you're going to summon it wherever, it doesn't really matter because we're going to be using its effect to shuffle back the Skeleton so that we get to set our orchestrated Climax. So we can set the Climax here, so that's our second negate, we've got a Fog Blade and a Climax. And then we're going to just do some resource management by summoning Dingirsu. We're going to use Dingirsu's effect to re-equip the Harp Horror from our Banish Zone so that it goes back to Grave, that way it can be banished next turn to summon the symbol skeleton and then make good link shenanigans happen, you know? That sort of stuff. And then from here we can fully resolve the rest of our Phantom Knight engine, which is going 
cloak into boots, which can special summon itself because Rusty Bardish is on the field, and then making another Galatee to make the Climax live, and then this searches the last Fog Blade and sets it. So, that's basically all you really need to know. It's very simple, it's just slightly modified from what we were used to doing with one card with Neptibus, because one Neptibus would end on, like, a rank 4... Uh, you could make, um, because we had Summon Sorceress, you could make the, uh, the rank 8, uh, Lancelot, and do just a lot of stuff, right? Now, those can be modified to be better than what this is, but they require extra cards, so let me clean this up real quick, and I will show you the second combo in this sequence. Alright, second combo. This is not the best combo, but we're starting to get there. This one is a two-card combo, Neptibus plus Mermel Abysseus, and this combo is going to end on... Moolin Glacing two cards out of your opponent's hand, and then four negates. One of the negates is going to be a rank eight that we are capable of summoning. In this case, I like to go for Titanic Galaxy, specifically because of how early we're going for it. That is possible. So, what you're going to do is you're going to normal summon the Neptibus again. You're going to activate Neptibus, sending Dragoons, adding Dragoons. Again, we are going to be using this Dragoons to go for the Lapis Dragon, because it summons itself, making itself a... A pretty easy card to facilitate a bunch of this stuff. Activate, please. Thank you. And now from here, we're going to activate the Teus, discarding Dragoons, summoning the Teus to the board. The Dragoons will trigger, and the Teus will trigger. Now, the Teus is going to search this card that we have played in the past, Mermail Abyssmander. Now, this is going to be what causes our level modulation to go up and down for different combos to be ending on different key negation card choices. Now, this Dragoons is going to trigger... And what we're going to add is we're going to add a Moulin Glace to our hand, because that is our last Dragoon search for this turn. Now we have two Waters in Grave. What we're going to do is we're going to go into Nightmare Phoenix with these two, leaving the Teus up. And then we're going to link that Nightmare Phoenix away into Nightmare Mermaid. Nightmare Mermaid is going to discard the Abyssmander, summoning the Orcus Nightmare. And then we're capable of doing some stuff. Uh, basically, I like to make the Galati first, even though it does put six waters in grave, because this banishes itself, so it puts us back down to five. So, I like to make Galati over here. We can't summon this because we've just put the sixth water in grave, but we're capable of using Abyssmander to increase Arteus's level by one. So now it's a level eight. So now we're going to special the Moulin Glace. Moulin Glace activates, taking two cards out of the opponent's hand. And now from here, we're able to go into the Titanic Galaxy in this zone all the way over here out of the way without having to be, you know, interrupted or uh, interacting with the negative effects of Orchestrated Nightmare, uh, or not. So, what we're going to do is use this, send Harporter to Grave, and then at this point, again, it's just an Orcus combo. Nothing super special about it, other than the fact that we are modifying specific points to get exactly what we want out of it. So, again, setting Fog Blade, we have the uh, Symbol Skeleton in Grave, and the cloak so this gets back the galaxy we go into the galaxy getting the climax by shuffling back the skeleton so set the spell trap yes give me the climax and then again proper resource management putting the dingirsu on top of the galaxy and then using its effect to equip the harp horror so that it goes back to grave so that we have good resource management there and then from here again finishing out the rest of the phantom knight engine getting the silent boots Special summoning the Silent Boots, and then making the Galati, and getting our last Fog Blade. We have to make the Galati because Orcs Trade Climax uh, specifically needs us to have an Orcus Link monster on the board, but that's pretty fine. So, two Fog Blades, a Climax, and a Titanic Galaxy. So your opponent has four cards. You, in theory, have four negations. Two Monster Effect negates, one Spell negate, and then... Orcus Climax. Now, you could wait until the end of this combo sequence and not make a rank 8, and you could make like Lancelot as the very last thing you do, because Lancelot does negate more cards than Titanic Galaxy does. The reason we don't make Lancelot early is because if we made Lancelot there, where we made the Titanic Galaxy, it mandatory negates the very next action that happens which means that our Orcus Nightmare would be negated, and that would be not very good for us, as I'm sure you could imagine. But you can do this entire combo sequence with the Moulin Glace and the Teus, that is a level 8 still on the board over here, and then you could just go uh, make the uh, thing into a Lancelot over here. It's not really that big of an issue. Definitely something that can be done, 
It's usually just not what I go for, though, because, I mean, Titanic Galaxy protects us from battle as well, even though it already protects itself. Uh, just making things redirect into this seems a little good to me, but you could go for Lancelot. Any dark rank 8 that does something. It's pretty much Lancelot, uh, Felgrant, Titanic Galaxy, or Zombie Stein are the only ones, and Zombie Stein seems like it's the worst one out of those for this deck because it specifically has a discarded card, but I digress. Moving on to the third and best combo, the one that yields you a VFD. Alright, so now we found our way to the third and final combo sequence. This one is by far the best one, specifically because of what it is ending on. It is ending on True King of All Calamities, plus three other negation cards and two cards being taken out of the opponent's hand via Mooling Glacia. And this combo is a two-card combo of Teus plus Dragoons, and can involve a third card if you choose to, but I'll discuss that when we get there. But so, Teus discarding Dragoons, Dragoons triggers, Teus triggers, Teus is going to again add Abyss Mander. And then the Dragoons here is going to add Deep Sea Diva because we have the ability to do so. So we're going to be bypassing Lapis Dragon for this combo sequence because we don't need it because we have the extra monster in the form of the Deep Sea Diva. So, Diva for Neptibus. Neptibus sending Dragoons, adding the third Dragoons, and then this Dragoons will trigger and is going to add the uh, Megalo to hand. For some reason, my brain just stopped working for a second. But so you're going to add Megalo to hand. And then you're going to link these into Nightmare Phoenix. We are going to summon the Megalo by discarding the Mander and the Dragoons. This combo is self-contained, but this is where the third card comes into play. So we're going to use Dragoons to search for Mooling Lace. But we are also going to add a Biscale of the Mizuchi to our hand off of this Megalo. Now for this combo, that is going to be what I discard off of my Nightmare Mermaid. However, you could just keep this card that you surge off Megalo. It could be an Abyss Sphere. It could be one of the other Abyss cards. Um, it could be Abyss Squall. I mean, it could be. <laughs> it's up to you. Uh, but basically, I play this because uh, going second with this deck, you can punch a lot harder with a Megalo equipped with this card. Uh, and so that's key. Going first, we're already doing this, so we don't really need Abyss Sphere, right? But so what this allows is that we now have six waters in Grave. But Abyssmander can banish itself. Big think. So, we're going to use Abyssmander. Increase both the Megalo and the Teus' levels by 2. So now they are both level 9s. Nice, big, beefy boys. And so we have 5 Waters Engrave, so we're going to summon the Mooling Glace. And this combo I like in particular because it Mooling Glaces your opponent uh, before they could potentially, like, Ash Blossom your Nightmare Mermaid if they're holding Ash for that. I mean, realistically, they would probably be ashing your Deep Sea Diva, but still, it is an aspect that I do enjoy. But, what we're going to do from here is we're going to link the Nightmare Phoenix into the Nightmare Mermaid over here. We're going to use Nightmare Mermaid's effect, discarding this free card from Megalo, getting the Orcist Nightmare. And now we have these two cards that can go into our True King of All Calamities. You can either do it here or you can do it later. I prefer to do it early because it makes more space on the board. But now from here, we can go into the Galati, and then we can use the Orcist Nightmare and then finish out the Orcus combo. Pretty clear cut. Sending Harpoor. If you already don't know the combo by now, once you get to this stage, I mean, I I don't know how many more times you could see it before you can understand it, but it's it's pretty simple. It's what makes Orcus so good. The Orcus engine is so good because this combo is so actually easy once you get to the uh, once you get to the Galati and to Harpoor. Like it's so easy. So put back the skeleton this VFD keeps asking me to trigger its effect, and I'm going to say no every single time. Uh, but again, making Dengirsu for proper resource management because we're putting back the skeleton. We're using uh, the Dengirsu to put the Harpoor back into the graveyard, uh, and that's pretty much all we need to know. But so this fills out the rest of our uh, Phantom Knight engine. And that's basically it. Like, you just, you play these cards because they are good. Once they start extending, they are very, very good. But so, doing that, then linking into the Galati again with the Dengirsu, and then getting the last Fog Blade off of the Silent Boots, and setting that Fog Blade. And so now from here, you're really set. Now, the second combo had the benefit of, since you were making Teus a level 8, you could overlay with Mulan Glacia, that way Mulan Glacia never leaves the field. It never has the ability to leave the field because it's an Xyz material. But VFD is all around a much better card to have in a vacuum. Because 
yeah, you have these fog blades, which are monster negates, and VFD does seem kind of redundant here. However, the fact that, like, this can negate danger monsters is a huge thing. Like, you could just call dark on your opponent's turn, all their danger monster effects engrave get negated. And that's things that fog blade could not reach into. Uh, so, like, if you're playing against a danger deck and you have, like, Titanic Galaxy, two fog blades, and Climax, like, you're not really going to be negating a lot of the stuff they're doing in the graveyard, which is key. Again, against Salamangrate, like, Fog Blades probably were enough to get you there, but if they have a lot of extenders, Calamity just shuts the door on them. But most of their extenders are spell-based, so I guess Titanic Galaxy would do the same thing, too. I don't know. There's a reason I'm playing both, right? The Rank 8 ending has its pros and cons. This has its pros and cons based off certain matchups. Uh, and, obviously, there's just different ways you can go about it, clearly. But, uh, yeah, that's basically how this works. Uh, this is a very nice little engine to play an Orcus deck in, or an Orcus engine in. It's a nice deck to do so, because unlike things like the Dino variant, the Dino variant, if you open Over Raptor, that's going to be a full Orcus combo, yes. But it doesn't end with a pill into Ultimate Conductor Tyranno if you're doing the one-card combo. That's always a two-card combo to get the Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. Whereas in the Mermel variant, in the Atlantean Mermel variant, Neptibus by itself will always get Mulan Glacia, and then the three negation cards of Fogblade, Fogblade, Climax. Whereas once you add that other card into the mix of an extender, like Teus, or whatever, like you can add Megalo in in certain situations as well uh, to make certain things work, you end up getting a little bit better than what you put in, because you're able to make another negation on top of that. So... This is basically all I wanted to share with you. There's three different ways to go about this, the three different things you need to know about it. Uh, Abyssmander is a very, very strong card uh, because it doesn't brick the deck. It's a water card, so if you're playing a Mermail-heavy strat, it's a water card. You can discard it for Teus. You can discard it for Megalo. It's not a card like Rank Up Magic Astral Force, which people thought I was using in this deck, that would actually brick you, but I digress. Anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always... Uh, as I've said before, subscribe if you're new here and want to see more awesome stuff. There's things I'd like to show you if you want to stick around. But other than that, like the video if you did like it and leave a comment down below with your thoughts or suggestions or whatever. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys, and take care. I'll see you in the next video.